Welcome to uh, back to the IMO vlog. We're doing a, another in the series of uh, IMO uh, is not f uh, five minutes. IMO five minutes is not in depth. We're covering the topic of slut shaming because uh, there 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 are things to talk about. So let me give you a time and date stamp because as a with the vlog that this is a research vlog. Uh, you need your time and date stamp. It is fourteen hours and forty two minutes into the day of. Friday, June 13th, 2014. And today is kind of an odds and ends type of thing. It's, 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 it's a, not a, uh, uh, <laughs> it's not, uh, it, 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 it's not a, uh, a pretty heavy vlog, heavy vlog. Uh, it just, but what happens is, is that, uh, there are times where administrative work needs to get done, and that happens. And I've been working, I've been still working on the notes. Notes aren't, aren't, aren't actually easy to do sometimes because there are a variety of different ways you can organize your notes. If you remember last time, the last uh, uh, IMO vlog, I said I was going off to, do, to, do, to, uh, to organize my notes. Well, it was a little more complex than I expected because there were a lot more notes than I expected. And. Um, that's what usually happens. You find sources and you continue to find sources as you bring more information in. Uh, you wind up with a ton, a, a ton of notes all over the place and as you start to go and organize them, you initially organize them one way, but as you go through them again, you begin to realize that there might be a second and third way that's actually better. And so that's been the process for the last eight days. Uh, I've also been uh, reorganizing the channel, the network channel, so that uh, we are getting off more on the research fo footing. And as I said before, uh, the content here on Cyborg Alpha TV Network uh, is going to be different than in terms of its 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 aiming. Uh, PBS is generally aimed in terms of its educational content and its academic content. It's usually d aimed at. Uh, uh, First year university and below. In other words, first year grad, first year undergraduate, and then below that. So it's junior high, high school, and first year undergraduate. That's the general aiming for PBS. Uh, this channel, but we are going to be the sort of like like, like the PBS on. Uh, we're going to be the PBS of YouTube. That's our advertising. That's our sort of our moniker for now. Uh, and this will get people. Some people familiar with what we're doing because some people do know what, AP, what PBS is. Uh, yeah, PBS is not a popular channel. There's not a lot of people knocking down the door saying, Hey, I'm a PBS fan. <laughs> uh, PBS is more off to the sides. We are not mainstream. Uh, and that being the case, I decided, well, since we're not going to go mainstream, let's, let's not go mainstream altogether. And so I'm aiming this at, uh, this is first year and up. So this is definitely undergraduate work. But it's beyond your first and second year sort of type of thing. Uh, what happens in your first and second year? First and second year are prim in, in, in undergraduate university are primarily general courses. They give you uh, stuff that's pretty much textbook oriented. Is then at the end of second year, at the end of the second year of university, that you have the option to go off book. Uh, and what I mean by off book, that means you have a, a, the opportunity to really explore. Uh, What's out there beyond the textbook? And there is a lot beyond the textbook that most people don't see. Uh, and there are comments from, from younger people uh, uh, as I you know, go around the engine talking about you know uh, how tiring exams are and they show them an the exam paper, how, uh, how, you know, how much studying is done for the exam paper. Well, imagine telling them, well, what's in your exam paper? You know how all that work you put into exam paper? Well, it's not really worth much of anything because most of what you learned in that textbook is... Kind of wrong. 
Yeah. And the thing is, that's, that's the way it is, is that when you go look into history, and I've been actually doing work, uh, in the last eight days I've been doing some more work in archaeology, uh, looking at uh, the, our views of the way we see the world are very biased. Uh, most of the textbooks that, that, that most people study in the West, that are called quote unquote, academic books, uh, are very one-sided. They're very written from the point of view of, of the Western world, of the European world. And it's written from the point of view of European history. So, uh, but if you go out and actually do the research, you go out and look at these different cultures around the world, you'll find that the Eurocentric view is very limited. That it's not a global view. It's not taking into account a lot of uh, the history of the world and different cultures that are out there. And it's very close-minded in, in, in many ways, even though they may consider themselves to be uh, educated, to be um, intellectuals. Uh, they are very much, as you go out and do the research, you go out and sort of see what's out there, uh, very uh, close-minded in many ways because their assumptions are backed up only by assertion. They're not actually backed up by research. They're actually backed up by assertion. It's my way. This is right. I'm, an edu I'm, I'm educated. I'm an intellectual. Look at where I am. Look at all the degrees I have. And that's their backing for what their arguments are, for what their position is and how they see the world in terms of their academic views. Uh, but the thing is you have to do more than that. You actually have to start questioning yourself uh, to go beyond the textbook. You have to start, start questioning what you know. And ask yourself, is there something more out there? And then usually you, as you start looking beyond that, you start looking at some of these things, that's what you find out here. And so, you know, as I said, you do have comments from people, and, and this is sort of where we are right now. We, we, we're getting comments from people, and uh, we are aiming to be uh, undergraduate, not uh, oriented, uh, not uh, high school, and... and um, junior high, but we are going to uh, hope to, uh, you know, offer access to people who are interested if, in junior high and in high school. If you're interested, if this is something you might, be, you know, want to take a look at, if you're sort of an alternative type of person, you want to see alternative points of view, uh, so sort of going off that textbook type of thing, then, you know, by all means, stay here. It doesn't matter what your education level. Ask questions. If, if you don't know something, or you think I'm using big and fancy words, ask questions. Even if, the, you know, and this is what I'm talking about because this we'll be talking about the comments that came in uh, just a little while ago, uh, just sort of last night. They were negative comment, comments, but you know what? If that's how you need to open up a conversation, if that's how the conversation opens up, then that's all right then. It's all right to have negative comments. Uh, in, if it opens up the conversation, you know, if it doesn't open up the conversation, if it doesn't, if people walk away from the conversation because of negative comments, then, you know, the, they, they just don't do anything. They, they sort of, what happens is that someone views your work, uh, and even if they hate it, well, they viewed it anyways, and that view counts, so, yay. <laughs> um, uh, so, when I come back uh, in the next segment, uh, we are going to take a look at the comments here. We'll go more in depth into the comments. Uh, that's what we do today because we're still in the organization mode. There's still a lot of fixing up that needs to be done. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's going to take some time. So, anyways, we'll be back in just a couple seconds and we'll talk about our main topic today and that is comments yeah your comments down below we're going to talk about your comments down below we're going to have a discussion right in here all right see you in a few seconds <laughs> be prepared to have what you know challenged by cyborg alpha tv network <laughs> Well, welcome back, everybody. Uh, it's time to get on to our comments. We were uh, was saying that, you know, it doesn't matter if the comments are negative. And the comments that were left by this person here was were, were rather negative. They weren't uh, positive comments. Uh, I'll give you an example of what they were like. 
Let's see if I've got it here still properly done. Uh, scroll to posts. This person doesn't have a lot of posts. Her name is Harmony Shelton. And this is, one of the things I do is I do go back and I check to see who the person is who left the comments. I don't simply uh, look at a comment and not look at the person who says this. It. You need to know who is saying the comments, not just that the comments were made. So, uh, basically it starts off like, yeah, you're a creep uh, telling kids to come home, hang with you. To come, to come hang out with you. Uh, and it says, there's another one that says, uh, you're creepy by, you're, you're creepy doing comments and stuff to beauty gurus who are like 14 to 17, LOL, right, laugh out loud type of thing. In other words, she's being, uh, you know, I don't know if she realizes it, but she's being sort of uh, condescending, sort of, um, it's not. It's not a laugh that she's making a joke. She. What she's doing is she's being. Um, this is sort of a. Uh, it's a negative comment, but done with a smile. If you want to do it. This. But the thing is, if you look at her her her, her, her writing here, it says you're uh, you, uh, you're creepy doing comments and stuff. This is. I, I was trying to say. Well, maybe she left out the end. But it's, but the thing is, I don't think she did that. I think that what's happening here is that if, if you look at some of her other comments, that she's the type of person she's um, doing what I call uh, most people call gangster speak. You know, they're they're talking like a gangster. That that uh, they're using a lot of these what are called ghetto terms. And her main comments on here, because she has left more than one comment. Her main comment here is, uh, "You just keep you uh, you just using again." This is hard to read because uh, her English is very very off. And, and you know, on camera it's hard to do things. And all, there are there you know even when you type, there's a lot of typos. So that happens, you know. But this goes beyond typos. Uh, you're just using. Uh, big words uh, to make it sound like you know what you're talking about. Um, and the thing is, you keep messing. Uh, you keep messing. You uh, and rambling on. And <laughs> instead, of, instead, of, instead of and, right? It's and, right? Uh, when you didn't uh, know what to say. You say something dumb. Delete this channel. Nobody watches these anyway. So, um, yeah, negative comment. But uh, when you go back and you take a look at her channel, uh, this is I'm reading her uh, her what's called her um, uh, her Google Plus page. And this is where Google Plus actually comes into handy. You see who she is. Uh, you can see a little bit about her. She's basically got five followers. Uh, she's got 2,500 views. Um, not much in the way of photos. But uh, if she looks to be... There's no age on here, so you have no, no idea how old she is. And she is female, but she does have a YouTube channel, and that's kind of interesting. You go to her YouTube channel and sort of hear what what type of music she likes, because that's what a lot of this is how you know if a person's a teen or whatever. You if you know what they're a teen by the type of music they like, and you can hear some of the, the lyrics. Uh, this is what she likes. This is her uh, channel here. So that's that's the uh, the video there. That's that's what she has on her channel there. Um, I would say that this is 
Unfortunately, pretty typical. It's typical of what I expected from from the type of uh, from the type of uh, profile that she has. Uh, you can see that uh, unlike uh, many of the, like like the white rappers, I think she is uh, black. It seems like that way she is, and she does have a lot of that particular what you call black attitude. And I'm not going to say African American because uh, if you uh, stand outside the United States for a little bit and you go see, in particularly into the immigrant communities, you'll find that the Africans, the re the one, the people who are from Africa, recently, and not have an an, an, what call an ancestral background in Africa, but really are from Africa. That they are completely different. They're not. Matter of fact, many Africans, the ones that I know who are from Africa, uh, they're pretty much like the Greeks, the Syrians, the Asians, and any other immigrant that comes along. They're very hardworking. They, well, they don't know English. They don't. Uh, they don't have a swagger in what they call ignorance. And the difference, but there's a difference between ignorance and not knowing something. Not knowing something is something you just don't know, and you make an effort to try to learn. Ignorance is where you have the opportunity to learn and to know things, but you simply turn it away and say, "Not for me." In other words, ignorance is the th ignorance is the willful blindness. It's the things you don't want to know. Not just you can't know the stuff, but you just don't want to know it. And this is where, uh, the, if you read the comments that she's left, you can place the comment that she is an ig ignorant nigger. And this is where the term gets a little dicey because oh, that's a comment, that, that's a negative comment, you're being racist. Well, no, I'm not being racist because this actually def defines who she is. It's based on um, an observation of her character. And as I said, if you look at Africans, and this has nothing to do with skin color, and a lot of the way you behave has nothing to do with skin color because you, if and you would understand this that there is no real racial back uh, sort of bias uh, that really prevents you from doing anything. All you have to do is go into an, any in, in any immigrant community to understand this. And I live in an immigrant community. I grew up in an immigrant community, so uh, I'm very familiar with immigrants, and they're not like what you see. You know, they're not they're not the Gangster rappers, you know, the gangster rappers and this whole thing about, well, this is racism and this is how they're rebelling against it. Well, that's, you know, if you have any knowledge outside of, and they can't, people can't have this knowledge outside of your own community, going into an immigrant community, then you know this isn't true. This is in, isn't the way people are generally. That This is sort of uh, an attribute that is specific to uh, the... Uh, gangster community, this sort of this black community, and it's not African. It's not an African attribute, and that's why I'm saying th that I'm not talking about them as Africans. I'm talking about them as blacks, and, and in many ways, uh, if you go back to Richard Pryor and a lot of the older comedians, uh, they use the term "nigger" pr pretty pretty loosely, and sometimes it would be a compliment, and sometimes it would be derogatory. But looking at a character, and the nigger is a type of person who, um, and it's, it, 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 it's a complex, it's kind of complicated here because it has a variety of called nuances. And the nuances are, are uh, again, a more complicated term, they're subject. They have a variety of different meanings, and they can have these variety of different meanings all at once. The term nigger is originally a Greek term. It's related to the term kata. And the Greek terms, the definitions of particular words, and this is true in English to a certain extent, the definition really depends on how you use it. Uh, so it can be used as an insult, it could be used as a character description, uh, and it can be used as a character description and an insult. So both terms, are, uh, both kata and, and it's actually nigra. Uh, uh, nigra is the, is the Greek, uh, and same thing with kata. And when you transfer into uh, Western in English, this is comes from mostly from the West. You get nigger out of it. it, it, it nigger is a mispronunciation uh, of the word uh, nigger. And if you look at the definitions of the word and how they come about, you'll find nigger 
and kata to be synonymous. That means that they are the same words, uh, and they can be used uh, interchangeably. You know, you can take out the word nigga or nigger and put in the term kara with it. Uh, and my last name is Kara. So my last name is nigger. Uh, literally, that's what it is. Uh, and it reflects uh, some of the uh, not-so-nice European past, the colonial past. Uh, you'll find, actually, if you go into uh, colonial history and understand what was going on around the world outside the United States in terms of how uh, Europeans treated other people, you'll find that the whole issue of colonialism, one, is still going on today. There's still a colonial attitude, even from the left, the so-called humanitarians on the Democrat side. You'll find that very much they are very racist, that they're pretty much Eurocentric, they're white-oriented. And that's what it is. Anything that's European-oriented, if you're outside of North America, if you're in an immigrant community, White isn't the color. The white is the culture. It's the attitude. It's the behavior. And it's a Western uh, European type of behavior. And so even blacks, uh, if they have this gangster attitude where they don't really care about being educated, they don't care about their academics, and they're sort of just floating around. In other words, they're not challenging themselves. Uh, this is what the constitutes a nigger. A nigger is this... Uh, person who, and again, no color orientation, nigger is simply a person who does not want to learn. They stay in this sort of ghetto stage because this becomes, this ghetto stage, this gangster stage becomes their, um, their identity. This is how they identify themselves. And everybody to a certain degree has a facade. Everyone has a, a uh, particular uh, point of view in terms of how they see themselves. And this becomes, in many cases, problematic uh, as you get older in life because what happens is that if you have this sort of ignorant attitude that you have this gangster thing, at some point in time, you're going to wonder why, particularly as you get into older society, why you can't get a job, why you don't have the money other people have. And this is where the whole concept of, of the Western concept of racism comes. Well, it's not because of my fault. I'm, it's not because I'm being ignorant or haven't taken the opportunities to learn. It's simply because people are against me. They've said nasty things about me. And I'm a victim, so, you know, it's not my fault. It's somebody else's fault, and that's the way you end up viewing life. But the thing is, is that it doesn't matter what cards you dealt. And this is what a lot of people use terms in terms of you know, the cards you're given that, that you don't have choices in life. The thing is, you do have choices. You are given things. You are given the situation in life. All the situations you don't have control over. But how you deal with the situations, how you deal with your hand, the, the, the cards you're given, that's where your opportunities are. It's, it's not in, in what you're given. It's in how you deal with what you're given. You know, so your environment. You're in a particular environment. How do you deal with your environment? You know, do you take the opportunities that are there? Do you challenge yourself? Do you push yourself forward? Or do you sit back and have this particular attitude that, eh, nothing matters, and you have that game? The, the attitude that you have right there, that you, that you hear in the song. You hear in the song, is, and again, this is where you, get, you can bring in this whole uh, concept of, well, I'm talking to beauty gurus. Well, I think this is one of the questions I ask. Most people, when you look at eight, uh, Awesomeness TV and all these other different channels that are set up by adults, um, aimed at teens, take the assumption that teens are too stupid and too shallow to really care. Well, I know for a fact that the, not, all, not all teens are like that. There are teens who end up on the alternative side of things, who end up outside mainstream society. And, but in many cases, when they end up in mainstream society, there are adults there who are willing to go in and try to shape their mind. They try to move them politically. And their ulterior motives, their, their motives are not there, oh, let's help this teen out. They're there to create a new type of an adult that will be more in line politically with what the adult wants. In other words, there's a political motive behind it. And this goes on continuously. This is something that's going on in history. You can go, if you go into do your research in history, you'll find that. You'll find that uh, the, the history you taught, you're taught in school is not the way things are, but things have been always very political. And that you'll find that in many cases that the writings that um, 
that you're learning in school, the textbooks, have been written with a political motive in mind. That there is a political thought behind what's inside your textbook. And that change the political thought, change the political dynamic, and what's written in the textbook changes. <laughs> and this is what I'm talking about going outside the textbook here. And the thing is, it, can't, it doesn't have to be done just by alternative teens, teens who want to be alternative, or people who want to go off and find something different, who want to challenge the status quo. It can be done by the average teen, and this is why I'm doing IMO, is because you can't take standard topics like you talk about in IMO, these shallow topics of uh, uh, in, inside these beauty gurus, the, the, the basic beauty gurus are out there. One of them is Ali, Sim, Ali Simpson, she's Cody Simpson's uh, brother, there's uh, Madison Pettis, she's a Disney star, all these, they're, they're basically uh, teeny boppers with a lot of what we call Oprah attitude, where they're taking five minutes to discuss these in-depth issues, you know, they, they have these issues, issues and controversies, issues and controversies that they spend five minutes talking about. Well, the thing is, if you're challenging thoughts and ideas, well, that's what you do, is you go into areas that have a status quo. And you start challenging it. You start trying to break down the barriers and see, well, who is going to take notice? And the thing is, while this girl here, Harmony, had a negative reaction to it, her reaction was negative, it's still okay because it begins the conversation. The conversation has begun. It's opened the door for the conversation. The question is whether or not she's going to be ignorant and walk away from this. Or she can open the door and say, well, okay, you know what, I'm not going to spend too much time watching. Let's not come back bits and, bits and pieces and watch bits and pieces at a time. In other words, you don't have to start off watching everything. Start off with bits and pieces. And that's it. I'm not the authority here. I'm not here to be your authority. I'm here simply to pose challenges. To put different thoughts and ideas in your mind. It's up to you, and this is where the second year university part comes in, it's up to you to go out and research them. It's up to you to go out and learn how to how to do this research. And the thing is, this this is something that a second year university you know, a second year university student knows how to do. They know how to go off and research, or they should know how to do that anyways. And so they do. They should have the capacity to go off and do this uh, off textbook research. This is something. Uh, this is a capacity that most teenagers, most undergraduate students below below uh, the second year don't have. They don't have this capacity. But it doesn't mean you can't have this. It doesn't mean this, this, a junior high student can develop this type of capacity. It can be developed. You don't have to be, uh, you know, status quo and, and follow status quo. You can break off the status quo and start asking questions that you shouldn't be asking. In doing this sort of off-road re research or this off-book research, uh, it doesn't necessarily because it doesn't matter where you start. It's, it's, it's simply the matter. It's simply the matter that you start. Starting is the key, not where you start. And you can start in junior high. You can start younger than that. It just, it just depends on on how inquisitive your mind is, how much reading you're willing to do, how much studying you're willing to do. And unfortunately, that that does mean that this is a geek channel. It does mean that if this is something you start liking. Uh, and you're a popular person. You may have to hide this from your from your popular friends because this is geekish. This is going to turn you into some degree of a nerd, and you may have to hide it for a bit. You know, this is something that may be something you sort of uh, you know you have in your closet. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, I thank Harmony for her comments. I think uh, I hope this opens up a discussion. But we'll see where it goes. You know, you you do have to do this. You have to knock on doors, and a lot of times. Uh, some people are going to hear you, and again, this channel is not going to be a popular channel. PBS initially is not popular, but if I'm going further out than PBS is going, I'm going to be even less popular than PBS. So. <laughs> uh, I understand that. This, this, that's okay with me. Anyways, I will see you for the next IMO vlog, uh, maybe tomorrow or something like that. We'll see uh, how I get the notes done. But uh, anyways, I'll see you around. All right, take it easy. Welcome to the lab.
library. And I am a librarian. I am the professor. And professor of what? Professor of physics. Oh, say, can you see? Speech rules here at Democratic Earth.